Hey Run Junkies, I'm giving you an alternate take on the unboxing style video today. It's actually not a box, but it's a bag, and it's not something fresh and shiny from the factory, brand new, and oh hey, look at all the fun gadgets here. It's something that I found in my closet, it's been sitting there for about eight months. It's my swim bag! Since it's been a while since I've been to the pool, I need to take a little bit of inventory in my equipment. I need to check for wear on a few things, see if anything's missing and replace anything that might need to be replaced. Now this isn't just about cleaning out my closet. Adding swimming into a running regimen is a great way to cross train, and if you're a triathlete, you're already swimming anyway. But a swim workout in a regular lap pool can get very dull very fast. What I put in my swim bag helps mix it up a little bit and adds a little bit of variety into my pool workouts. So I thought I would go through this and explain why each thing is in here. First of all, <laughs> pink is not my thing. This might be the only pink item I own. This is gonna go out of order in terms of importance. I'm just pulling stuff out to show you what and why. First, we have a pair of fins. Uh, these are designed specifically for lap swimmers. This was a birthday present because I have awesome friends. Couple of notes about swim fins. They're great for developing muscle and building endurance. Please be careful to get a swim specific fin. Scuba and snorkeling fins are not designed for swimming in a pool. These I use in the pool most specifically with a kickboard. Through the course of a workout of maybe a mile or so, I might only use these for about 300 yards. Along with the fins, we have another resistance tool and these are paddles. So they slip on your hands like this and they create a larger surface area that you are actually pulling through the water and it creates more resistance as you're pulling. But like the swim fins, you wanna make sure you're getting the right style for you and your level. These are pretty hefty because I love using swim paddles. There are different styles. These are a little bit more expensive because I like the curve here in the palm, but there are flat varieties. There are also neoprene gloves that have kind of webbed fingers that you can use. All serve the same purpose. Next. If you are swimming in a public area ever using their shower, shower shoes are probably the greatest thing to have because you just don't want to think about what's on that floor too often. I'm not going to elaborate. Next. Ah, <laughs> the hairbrush that gets stuck to everything. This is a mesh bag that I use to carry my fins, my paddles, and all of my poolside uh, items. I carry that in this bag from the locker to poolside. Next, hair dryer. Well, I showed you the brush. This isn't very powerful, so I might not actually keep that in there. I have a combination lock. For the life of me, I can't remember the combination. So on my list is going to be a new combination lock. This is important. If you are swimming in a public space and there are lockers available, definitely use them. So get, having a combination lock is a big deal. Oh look, I got another one. <laughs> This one's older. Since it's older, I probably bought this one because I forgot the combination to this one. And now I've forgotten the combination to this one. I need a new lock. In a swim bag, I like to have at least two pairs of goggles for training purposes. And then I might even carry a third pair for open water. This is an example of what I would use in the pool on a regular basis, which is nice. I don't particularly care for these. They don't fit me very well. Goggle fit is very important. You don't want your goggles to leak. If you have a good swim shop nearby, they may have all of their different varieties of goggles out for you to try on. And if that's the case, please take your time to do so. Make sure that the goggle fits fairly well against your face without the strap on. Once you have a good fit around your eye, then put the strap on and decide whether or not it's comfortable. Here's the thing about goggles. You like this look? You want the strap to be up here around the crown of your head. Once it starts falling down your head, your goggles will leak. These are my open water goggles that I use for a triathlon. When I am swimming out in a lake, whether I'm training or racing, these are my goggles. They are mirrored and they are tinted as well. They're also a wider coverage. You can kind of tell how much bigger they are and oh my gosh, they are filthy. I can't actually see out of these. <laughs> They're really dirty. I think I need to clean these before I use them again. And test your goggles and training before you take them out into the open water. You certainly don't want to try anything new on race day. Make sure that your goggles will stay on without leaking. Obviously, a swimsuit is crucial. When you are doing laps, and I know a lot of triathletes know this, but um, it is worth investing in a swim 
lap specific suit, a competitive suit. When I'm training for triathlon, I will replace my swimsuit probably every three to six months, depending on my frequency in the pool. This one needs to be replaced or relegated to a training suit because it is breaking down a little bit. You definitely want to look for that before you use your suit for too long. This is the only suit that was in this bag. I need to see if I have a newer suit. I think I do, but I need to make sure that that goes in here before I go swimming again. One thing about older suits though, you can use them as a drag suit for resistance training. Growing up on swim team, we all wore two suits especially if we were more competitive, it created drag, which created resistance, which made us stronger on race day. You don't necessarily need to do it all the time, but maybe if you're swimming frequently two to three days a week, maybe one of those days you add a drag suit. What that means is you're wearing your newest suit underneath. It's the tightest, it's going to fit the best. And then you wear your looser, more broken down suit on the outside of that. It's yet another way to add resistance into your swim workouts and variety. Okay, a swim cap. Well, this one looks actually pretty faded and I'm not sure if it's, yeah. I save all of my race day caps because they're great as backups. This one uh, looks not only a little faded, but a little thin in spots. It's just been sitting in here and I haven't been taking care of it. Latex swim caps will break down. So you wanna make sure that it's either still a good cap or have a backup. So again, I'll probably wanna put another cap, if not two more caps in here. Workouts in a binder. Swim Workouts for Triathletes by Gail Bernhardt and Nick Hansen. This one's an older version of the book, but you can find that on Amazon. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. I love this book because it's got so many different workouts in it. I have never been bored using this binder. The other nice thing about this binder is that can, it can stand up and sit poolside. It's also waterproof pages. It's that, you know, plasticky kind of page. So it doesn't, you know, deteriorate over time. If you love to swim, but want some variety, swim workouts for triathletes. Okay, so that's everything that was in here and uh, there are a couple of things I know I need to put in here now. So I do have a newer suit. I'm gonna throw that back in. I'm gonna throw the old purple one back in. I also have this really sad, faded, this thing is gonna fall apart any day, um, but another great backup suit. Yes, I have three suits in my swim bag. Why? Because I'm like that. I put the workouts in a binder back in there. For me, the must-haves are the towel, which I'll throw in later, the workouts in a binder, the swimsuits, plural, uh, the pair of goggles. I need to get a new pair of goggles, but just in case I don't get that far, I can use these. So these are a couple of swim caps that are still pretty good. I'm gonna throw both of these in here. I like the brighter colors for swim caps, especially when I'm training in open water, and especially if there's boat traffic around, you wanna be able to be seen. Use the chamois towel poolside, uh, so I'm not getting my terry cloth towel wet. Bag back in there, neither of these work. Get those out. Shower shoes, paddles and fins. Lastly, I need toiletries. I also like to bring a really good lotion. I use CeraVe. Oh, the last thing, and I think the last thing that's missing is a water bottle. So I tend to grab a bike bottle and I'll fill it with water before I head to the pool and I have that pool side. You wanna stay hydrated. Even though you're in the water, you're still working out, you're still sweating, you might not even realize it. So having some water pool side, is a definite must. My question for you today is this, do you add swimming into your running routine or are you a triathlete that just loves to swim? If so, what are your favorite tools to add variety and mix up your workout a little bit? Leave your comments in the box below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. That is it from me today. Thank you so much for watching. Get out there, go find your awesome. We'll see you next time and until then, happy swimming.